Okay, this video is about the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. And of course, we're continuing from the problem we worked on in the last video, right? We're trying to uh, discuss the properties of hypothesis testing one by one. The first step we did in the previous video was expressing the claim symbolically. Our second step in the process of testing hypotheses is going to be to work with these two competing hypotheses. These two hypotheses are actually in direct opposition of one another. So let's talk about first the notation. The null hypothesis is represented by this guy, h sub 0, or h naught, right? Um, 0, like this, a subscript of 0, usually represents like an initial condition. So we can kind of think of this as like our initial hypothesis. Um, we'll explain how that makes sense later on. This guy's notation is h sub a, the a here for alternative hypothesis. You sometimes see h sub 1, the number 1. That's okay too, but uh, I like h sub a because a is very explicit, alternative hypothesis. All right, so what I want to do is basically uh, discuss the properties of these hypotheses. They're actually going to be a lot like the hypothesis that we had or the claim that we had in the previous video, but um, they're going to have specific properties that are going to let us know whether that um, claim, for example, is a null hypothesis or an alternative hypothesis. So here's essentially what we're going to do. Let's start with the null. We're going to list just a few things about this family of hypotheses so that um, when we see a hypothesis, we can kind of instantly know whether it's the null or not. And then we also want to know some other attributes of these hypotheses. In the beginning, there's a lot of kind of memorization. There's like a, a steep learning curve. But as you work out problems from start to finish, when you look at the example problems, all of this will sink in very well. For now, though, we just need to make sure you have some theory about these hypotheses. So the null hypothesis, first of all, uses one of the following three symbols. It'll either use less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or it will use equal to. That's the symbols that the null hypothesis uses. Period, end of story. It has to have one of these three symbols. Just one, but it'll have one of the three. And notice that each of them has the condition of equality. Each one has an equal sign as a part of it. So the null hypothesis has that quality that there's always equality in it, right? That's very important. Another important thing about the null hypothesis is that it's the hypothesis that we test. It's the hypothesis we assume to be true in the beginning initially, right? Initially we assume it to be true, and we test that hypothesis. That's the two most important things I want you to remember about it. That it has one of these three symbols, and that we always test it. When we say we're testing a hypothesis, we're testing the null hypothesis in every case. Okay. Now, the next hypothesis we're going to talk about is this HA guy, right? The alternative hypothesis. Alternative hypothesis. So, I just want to remind you the name, of course, the alternative, right? But I also want to talk about its symbols, because the null has its three symbols, the alternative has its three symbols that correspond to these three symbols. So essentially what you want to realize is that they come in pairs. HO and HA will come as a pair in each problem. And if HO should have this less than or equal to, the alternative hypothesis has to have the opposite of that. It has to have greater than. So when this guy, when HO has less than or equal to, the alternative will have the greater than symbol. When the null hypothesis has greater than or equal to, the alternative has to have less than. And then finally, if the null has equal to, the alternative must have not equal to. And let's try to understand why, because these hypotheses are going to be set up as like a competition between them. The process of testing a hypothesis is basically to create a competition between two, these two hypotheses and to see who the winner is. But they must express completely opposite points of view. For example, we're talking about the mean. In this problem, you know, we have the average time to finish a four-year degree. You know, that average is either greater than five years, right? It's either greater than five years, or it's less than or equal to five years, right? There's only two possibilities. Any number that you deal with is either greater than five or is less than or equal to five, right? Any number you could pick in the universe is either greater than five or less than or equal to five. So this uh, competing set then has a clear winner and a clear loser. If we could show that this one is true, then we'd be saying that one must be false, right? If there was a way to do that. And so our strategy for hypothesis testing basically works like this. We test this guy. 
We see if that's true or false. Once we come to our conclusion about that, then we'll have a corresponding result for this one. If we know this one is false, that one must be true because they're in direct opposition of one another. Remember, only one can be true because they're mutually exclusive, right? Either you're greater than or you're less than or equal to, right? And then it's the same thing for this one. If you add greater than or equal to here, less than is the only other possibility. If a number is greater than or equal to, say, 10, or it could be less than 10, right? You could say a number is either equal to 10 or it's not equal to 10, right? So this is always the competing pairs that you see. They must appear together. If HO has this one, alternative for that same problem must be this. If HO has this, the alternative must be this, so on and so forth. Notice there is no equal sign for either one of them. All right, and then the last thing I want to say about the alternative hypothesis right now is that it's going to determine what kind of hypothesis testing procedure we use ultimately. We're going to learn later on that there's such a thing called a right tail test, a left tail test, and a two tail test, and that's going to be corresponding to these symbols that we have here for the alternative hypothesis. So we're going to learn later on to look at the symbol that we see in the alternative hypothesis, and we're going to say, okay, after looking at that symbol, I'll know what kind of testing procedure to use, whether it be something called a right tail test, something called a left tail test, something called a two tail test. And we're going to learn later how to distinguish that. In fact, I can give you a little trick now. If you actually looked at these as if they were tips of arrows, you would say this guy, that arrow points to the right, this arrow points to the left, and this one, of course, you can remember is the other option, which is a two-tailed test. So a right-tailed test, left-tailed test, two-tailed test. At the moment, you don't know what those testing procedures are, but we just want to say that later on, we're going to look to this hypothesis to determine that idea. And uh, certainly later on you will understand what I mean when I say right tail, left tail, or two tail hypothesis test. Okay, um, the final thing I'll mention about these is that the null hypothesis, some people say that's the status quo hypothesis. In other words, it's sort of the opinion that's been around for a while that people accept as being true. Um, that's okay, I mean, that's not always the case, but you know, a lot of times that's true. And then the alternative hypothesis is said to be the research hypothesis. It's sort of the, um, the hypothesis coming to challenge or to be the alternative to the status quo hypothesis that's out there already. Um, all right, so that's all we have to say about these hypotheses. Let's, for our problem, actually determine what HO and HA are. So if we have this statement, this original claim here above, we want to figure out what HO and HA are. Let's do that real quick. So we have the claim from the last time. We said that the claim here was that the mean was greater than five years. The mean is greater than five. So that's our claim. From there, we can derive HO and HA very easily. The rule to do this, or the, the technique to do this is really simple. We look at the claim and we just ask ourselves, you know, what symbol is the claim using? In this case, it's using a greater than symbol. Notice that it doesn't have any kind of an equal sign in it. Because it doesn't have any kind of an equal sign, you know that the claim and HA in this particular problem are going to be the same thing. Sometimes the claim is HO, but it would have to have an equal sign for that to be the case. Here we don't have any kind of an equal sign, right? We don't have greater than or equal to, we just have greater than. And because of that, we're going to say that the HA is that the mean is greater than 5. That's our HA. The HO then is just going to have to express the opposite opinion, right? So if the mean is not greater than 5, it must be what? Less than or equal to 5. And that is how you come up with the null hypothesis when you're given the alternative hypothesis, right? You just find the opposite relationship. And you see, of course, that now HO has that desired equal sign like it's supposed to. So we've done our job well. This is actually our step two of the hypothesis testing procedure.